Ron. Movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. Oh my god, it's Movies with Ron. Hey yo. Welcome back. My name's Chris. Your MC for the time being. Across from me is Rick. Yo. He's our sound engineer. Mm-hmm. Next to him, who every week goes to see a movie and fills me and Rick in on that movie from beginning to end because we like his versions way better. Mm-hmm. It's Ron. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Glad to be back. Hey, you know, uh, you guys been watching this Ash vs. Evil Dead TV show? Yeah. I just finished the first season anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it's not TV with Ron, but it is based on some beloved series of films we like. And uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, man. Yeah. They are, they always use clips good. from the old movies. Yeah. You know, there's one part in season two where he goes to his house and uh-huh. he sees his sister's bedroom door and he flashes back to all the scenes of his sister in the old movies and he's like, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> and his dad is like, you piece of shit. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they really, uh, they're really creative with the gore, especially in season two. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's nothing like the old movies, I think, because back then Bruce Campbell wasn't in love with himself, and now he is, so it's not really Ash. He's still kind of Bruce Campbell. You really think he is? I do not get that. Yeah, I think he is. No. I think he's in love with the character, which he, I think, has turned it into something that it didn't quite start out as. Okay, there you go. But it is okay, and you need to accept it and (laughs) fall in love with it. I am in love with it. All right. All right. I have a de buyer's remorse. <laughs> in season two, he has to go to a morgue, and one of the cadavers is possessed, and it like jumps on his shoulders, like its legs, uh-huh. and and then it starts. He's like, "Oh no, not the butthole, not the butthole!" And it like puts its butthole over his head, and he's got to <laughs> fucking claw his way out of it. I don't know. At some point, he rips the stomach out, and you can see his head in there. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> they throw the gore around pretty good, and they got. They got some effects. Like it's it tries to be cheesy and aware of itself in a lot of it. The, the yeah, they're relying on those old practical effects to make yeah. it look more like the first movies. Well, what I'm saying is it doesn't mind looking dumb sometimes mm. or being dumb, mm-hmm. which sometimes gets on my nerves, but uh like one of the parts worked really well. It's where his his Delta, his old car gets possessed. And it's kind of like a Stephen King's Christine situation. That happened a little bit in the first season. Is that what you're talking about? It happens in the second season in a big episode. Okay. Because the Book of the Dead is in there, and there's no one in it. And at some point, uh, the car, the front corner of it, raises up and then slams down, and one of the hubcaps shoots off and goes into somebody's chest. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That is cool. Ash versus Evil Dead. Check that one out. Yeah. The, uh, the old series of movies, uh, in case you don't know, is uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. If you had to skip one of them, skip the first one. <laughs> nah, man. I don't like the claymation gore. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I hear you. But his sister in that movie, I'm sorry, man. She's great. That's some scary shit. And I remember, I guess, our sister was watching that when we were kids before I ever really knew what it was. She probably didn't even really know what it was either. Uh-huh. And uh, so I grew up with this image in my head of somebody's ankle being stabbed with a pencil and it was like really harrowing and scary i was just a little kid okay yeah (laughs) and then uh you know years went by and i actually saw that movie and there it was yeah and i was like oh shit oh yeah it's like that tendon back there just seeing it it's like some people have the problem with eyes i have that problem with the backs of ankles see like i had a similar experience with pet cemetery (laughs) oh yeah where the dude is the the kids under the bed and slashes the back of his ankle with a scalpel. Yeah, what's that? The Achilles tendon. Yeah, it's kind of shit. We're just seeing it. I got like feel pain. But um, yeah, Evil Dead. Uh, next on my list of show notes, Donald Glover is playing the young Lando Calrissian, but I don't see that going well on the show here. <laughs> I'm a fan. You're a fan of Community. Rick, you know who Donald Glover is? No, I work the night shift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like, <laughs> he was the kid at the end of The Martian, uh, in, who figures out how to get him home. Okay. In the in the messy office, he was on Community. Gotcha. He's playing Lando because they're making that Han Solo movie. All right. All right. Nope. 
<laughs> I do not approve. All right. Who do you approve of? Th- that I don't know. Maybe yeah. they should just find somebody new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Kelsey Grammer wants to play Beast some more. Hmm. He thinks the character was underutilized. I agree. Yeah. I mean, they utilized the young Beast a lot. Yeah. In that other trilogy. Mm-hmm. But Kelsey Grammer, I mean... I liked Kelsey Grammer's Beast. Oh, yeah. He was the Beast. Oh, yeah. He was Beast, like, from the comics and the cartoon. Hell, like, yeah, he was. I mean, I got X-Men comics when I was a kid, and it was mostly because of you. I was, like, eight years old. Yeah. I like I liked the tits, and I liked the characters kicking ass. I liked the artwork. It was part, part of what made me get into visual art. And, uh... But at eight years old, I wasn't going to be reading. I didn't read comic books. <laughs> what the fuck? I did not read any of them. I had like 20 or 30. Didn't maybe, read them. Maybe you should have read them. <laughs> <laughs> but, Are you, Rick? Comics? Yeah. Did you read them? <laughs> uh, yes. I had a big graphic novel of Amazing Spider-Man's Wedding. Um, I remember that. God. A couple of others. You remember it kicking around the house? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it was it was torn up. At some point, the cover was gone. Yeah. But it was like 200 pages. I had it. Yeah. I read it. I remember seeing it and being like, no way these guys have read this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it was like longhand. It wasn't comic book. It was like articles and shit. It was weird, though, because I started getting into like some of the other sub-characters, like, ooh, the Scarlet Spider. That was kind of my comic book face. So Beast? Okay. Kelsey Grammer was Beast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was perfect. He wants to be Beast some more. He needs to be Beast some more. Yeah. So what's going on? I don't know. I I sent out an Instagram, (laughs) and I tagged 20th Century Fox Uh and Marvel, being like, make this happen. So did Kelsey Grammer actually say something? Yeah. All right. It was uh, a bunch of articles. I don't remember down Periscope. Man, shut up. That's my recommendation this week. Well, All then, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get on with it. You trumped my segue. I'm sorry, but speaking of... Down Periscope, folks. All right. That's like Kelsey Grammer's, one of his first movies. Welcome aboard. It's kind of a a throwback to old the old 50s and 60s like military comedies, of which there was like there was a TV show that was like McHale's Navy. Yeah. And uh, they actually then made a movie version <laughs> yeah, of that with that had Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> He was good in that. Yeah. That was a pretty decent Tom Arnold movie. Yeah. Not bad at all. McHale's Ice Cream. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> they got grape. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Tim Curry was in that movie, man. Oh, Played the sh- bad guy. He oh, was. shit, yeah. You would wisely invest in an antiperspirant? <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on. Down Periscope. Yes. 1996. Saw this shit in the theater. Rob right. Schneider. This is like a lot of these stars weren't stars back then, but this is like a star studded cast here, oh, all right? God, it was good. Kelsey Grammer, Lauren Holly, who was she? From she, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Uh, Rob Schneider, Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. He was the old grease monkey that kept the engines running in uh-huh. the back. <laughs> all right. Bruce Dern. A lot of people know Bruce Dern from nowadays because he kind of had a renaissance, uh, but he was the Admiral Graham, the bad guy who wanted to see him fail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, William H. Macy, who was the captain of the Stingray, right? Yeah. Stingray was the no, bad no, no, sub? No, 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 no. Stingray was the good sub. The bad sub was the Orlando. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. I can't believe I remember that. Didn't really become a star, but Ken Hudson Campbell as Buckman the Cook. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, this, this is a story about the crew of a submarine, but it's kind of like it's kind of like the Dirty Dozen in a way, because it's like a ramshackle group of misfits. Yeah. All right? Because... Uh, Kelsey Grammer, he, he, he's invited to participate in a war game, and he's given his own submarine, but the general who wants to see him fail, wants him out of the Navy, gives him this, like, old, decrepit graveyard submarine from, like... Like World War II. Yeah, yeah, and it barely works. Yeah, and uh, diesel sub. And he gives him, like... Does he give him the worst crew members he can find or something? Yeah, I don't know. Much. Yeah. yeah. Bottom like, they the have world. to be... They were all rejects. Yeah, they have to be disciplined, all right? Uh, Toby Huss as Nitro, the radio guy. Yeah, all right? See, Dwayne Martin and Jonathan Penner as Jackson and Spots, who are the the drivers of the sub. Yeah. 
Submarines need two steering wheels. So th- those are the guys. And you know, you know, talking about sports and shit. Yeah. Bradford Tatum as Stepanek, the Man. the misfit. Uh, he is the Judd Nelson of the Breakfast Club of Down Periscope. Yeah, polishing yeah. the old torpedo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but he has that moment of redemption when, like, the sub's taking on water, and he's like, "I'm a badass." Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. You guys know Harland Williams as Sonar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Jesus, God, he saves their ass. Oh, yeah. And that. Yeah. With the fucking whales and shit. The Orlando's right up. <laughs> He's doing whale calls. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, it's like real quiet because the whole sub has to be quiet. And he's like, <laughs> he's like being all gentle with it. And then at some point, somebody like drops a pen or something. And it, <laughs> he like hears it like it like it was like cymbals crashing in his ear. <laughs> Or somebody... uh, 35 cents. It was a, a quarter and two dimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's 35 cents. Are you sure? Yeah, it was a quarter and two dimes. <laughs> and somewhere in there was Patton Oswalt. I don't remember him from that movie, but he's on IMDb. Huh. Well, yeah. Rip Torn's in it. Yeah, Rip Torn. There you go. The one and only. Oh, God. He plays the good general, the admiral. I need a man with a tattoo on his dick. <laughs> Have I got the right man? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yes, you do, sir. <laughs> but I was realizing, what's the uh, the the whole movie is kind of based on a war game. There's no real danger to them. The danger and the tension comes from the shitty submarine. Oh yeah, like that's <laughs> like the bad guy wants to kill them that way. Yeah, yeah. So they are in danger, and. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's a feel good movie, and it's got the fucking village people at the ending credits. Uh-huh. And Rob Schneider's like, "Sir, isn't this beyond crush depth?" Yeah, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> right <laughs> between you. the screws. Oh my god! Except it's deviled ham. <laughs> well, it tastes like cream corn, sir. You think we're all gonna roll out of bed and have a hot steaming cup of pig fat? <laughs> <laughs> it's cooking lard, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's that on your shoulder there, Nitro? A parrot? <laughs> From the group. <laughs> Save it. That's dinner later. <laughs> okay, go see down Periscope. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Oh, no. Fellas? Yes? I want to play another game. All right. All right. In honor of the Legends of the Hidden Temple movie, hmm. the three of us are tasked with picking a game show and pitching a feature film version of it. And we're going to do that after the recap. Oh, okay. So stay tuned, folks. <laughs> Ron, what'd you go see? I went to go see Ouija, Origin of Evil. All right. Yeah. I was looking it up. Uh-huh. It's like a prequel to the original Ouija. Yeah, which I've never 2014. seen. 2014. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think you should explain anything about it. I don't think it needs to. Because it's well, kind of... anyway. It's a lot. It's far removed from that. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, being that I've never heard of it's the, got like a four point on IMDb. Yeah, I've never heard of it at all. And this movie that I just went to see, it's well was reviewed. Pretty damn great. Yeah. <laughs> it's got yeah. like a seven point something. Oh yeah. And uh, Mike Flanagan directed it. Uh huh. He made Oculus. Yeah. But like he also a, made Hush. Is that a horror thing or is that like Remember kind of a thing now? Thing? No, I don't know. He's always done horror. Okay. But he did that Netflix horror about the deaf woman. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves that movie but us. Damn it. Yeah. It's, like, well-received. Like, people like it. I do not like it. Neither do I. (laughs) But he's still a good director. I liked Oculus, so. Yeah. I was excited how this would turn out. Yeah, I like it. It's good. I'll tell you what. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Um, You know that thing you hate where uh, people's mouths are open too wide, like inhumanly? Yeah, it's in here. This movie is fucking full of that shit. (laughs) I saw the preview. I thought about you a bunch of times. Eyes in the back of the head. (laughs) Yeah, man. (laughs) Fucking, uh, they made that little girl. They made her pretty scary. Like, pretty often throughout this film. It's good. Or maybe, did I explain that that fear on the air? You did indeed. Yeah. Okay. I've had people talk to me about that who listen to the show yeah yes you're like hey look at this that was during the Blair Witch one <laughs> I'm like what the fuck why are you coming to me with this because of the show hey Rick look at this <laughs> alright 
You ready? Yep. Here we go. Ouija on Movies with Ron. So uh, we start off with, uh, and I am going to mention this purposely, uh, the old 80s Universal logo. Oh, yeah. That I, used to, that I fucking grew up seeing. Loved seeing that. That was cool. I don't know why it's on here because the movie takes place in the 60s. <laughs> but you know what? It's cool. So we start in uh, L.A. in 1967. Uh, we just see the outside of a house. It says that. And then we get the title card of the movie, which is a full screen filled. Uh, all it is is just a picture of like the cover of the box that the old game came in. Oh, it's wow. weird looking. Like It fills the whole fucking screen. Does It's not just the, the words of Ouija. It's got like the weird like frame around it and everything. It's fucking strange. Yeah. It's all old timey looking. So uh, the uh, the mom of this family, which is uh, just a mom and her two daughters, uh, she's leading a seance between uh, a man and his daughter. And they're trying to contact uh, the guy's dead wife. Mm-hmm. So she's like, oh, you know, uh, so-and-so, who are we trying to talk to? And he's like, uh, Mary. And she's like, okay, Mary, if you're here, you know, if it's you, blow out the candle. And then the candle goes out. And so it's like, oh, shit. All right, now the daughter is like, this is a fucking scam. I don't believe this shit. And, uh, and then, like, stuff's like, like the cabinet doors are like, me opening up and shit. And it's fucking freaking everybody out, right? So she's got three candles on the table, and they're all lit. And she's like, we can ask her three questions. And the daughter, that daughter is like, why only three? <laughs> you know, she's like on to her because she's faking it. It's like her thing. Yeah. So she's like, ask her the questions. And the husband is like, uh, are you in any pain now? And then uh, the candle blows out because uh, blow it out if it's no, let it burn if it's yes. So it blows out. No, I'm not in any pain. And then uh, he's like, can you forgive me? <laughs> And then the candle like kind of flickers a little bit, but it stays it stays lit. And then she's like, "Okay, your third question." And then they see a fucking silhouette behind the curtains, and it's a fucking woman standing there. And it's pretty freaky looking. And now the daughter is like, "Okay, yep, <laughs> I get it. This is real." And uh, the dad is like, uh, "You know, Jenny here, our daughter. She's uh, she's got this new boyfriend, and they're asking me for a whole lot of money. Okay, and they say it's a good uh, investment." Okay, but uh, and, and he said that if it you know if it pans out he's he's definitely gonna marry her, so should I do it? And then uh, the candle just blows out, and then the daughter's like, "What the fuck?" And then the uh, fucking silhouette behind the curtain goes like, Wah! and like comes at them a little bit, and then everybody freaks out. The lights go out, and then the mom like turns the lights on, and whoever was behind the curtain is gone. Yeah. So then the man and daughter are, like, running out of the house. The lady's like, this is a fucking scam. You know, this is bullshit. Because the dad is, like, obviously not going to give her the money now because he, like, bought the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, he, like, tries to pay the mom. And then the mom's like, no, you know what? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Because I guess she felt so bad for him that his daughter was taking advantage of him. After that, uh, she calls her daughters out who are, like, hiding in the furniture and shit. Because they're the ones blowing out the candles. And her older daughter was the one behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. And she's like, man, you guys are fucking stuff up. Why'd you do that? Why'd you attack him like that? Trying to give that old guy a heart attack? That's why I didn't charge him. I don't need that fucker dying in my living room. (laughs) And uh, she's like, because that lady was a bitch. She's like, don't talk like that. All right, she was a bitch, wasn't she? So it's like, "Uh uh-huh, funny. Then the little girl's like, oh, hey, mommy, what's a scam? Like, what are we doing? Are we cheating people? She's like, no, we're helping them feel better. It's fine. So then we cut to that little girl. She's asleep in front of the TV. At that point, we pan over and we see a family photo of, of the three of them and then the dad of the family, who is obviously not there anymore. Turns out he's dead. Mom takes the little girl up to go to bed. She lay, uh, she kneels down on her bed to pray, but instead of praying to God, she prays to her dad. And uh, she's like, yeah, you know, everything's going to be fine. We love you, daddy, blah, blah, blah. And the mom is like, you know, Father Tom says you need to pray to God. Not to your dad. <laughs> you know, he can hear you and everything. It's fine. But, uh, you know, it's kind of weird that you're doing that. She's like, well, I like it. <laughs> so then Lena, uh, the older daughter, uh, the younger daughter's name is Doris. Lena, she's sneaking out. She sneaks out to go uh, out of her window to go to this, like, small party at her friend's house. Uh, while she's doing that, the mom is downstairs going over the bills. <laughs> and things are not looking good. <laughs> so you can tell they're going to be in some trouble. So at this little party, Lena, uh, you know, she's talking to her friends. There's this guy there, and uh, oh, she obviously likes him. And uh, while she's talking to all of them, she finds this weird game. 
in their stack of board games, and it's Ouija. Mm. And she's like, what's this? And they're like, oh, yeah, you can talk to the spirits. My mom just bought this. So, because uh, this, this party is happening in somebody else's house whose mom is not home. Before they play it, the girl reads the rules out loud and takes special note of this. Okay. okay. They were pretty ominous about it when they read these. The rules are three rules. One, never play alone. Two, never play in a graveyard. And three, always say goodbye. So they're sitting there and they're playing it, the four of them. And they're like, is anybody here? And it moves to yes. Uh, you know, and the, all their fingers are on it, okay? And uh, one of the girls is like, getting all freaked out. And they're like, hey, yeah, so like, what's it like on the other side? And it spells out cold. And then the guy is like, hey, hey, I got a question. Will Lena come to homecoming with me? And then she's like, what the hell? Uh -huh. um, so then this other girl's getting all freaked out. And then Lena, who is very accustomed to cheating people with supernatural fake shit. Yeah. Uh, she's like, yeah, listen, uh, here's the thing. Uh, one person is pushing it, but none of us know who it is because subconsciously we all want to help it move. So that's actually what we're doing. So we like we like follow whoever is leading it, and it is totally fake. It's fine. This shit, do this shit doesn't exist. And the girl's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So then the guy's like, will she come to homecoming with me? And then it moves to yes. And Lena's like, what the fuck? See, there's no spirit did no no spirit did that shit. And then the girl's mom busts in through the door and scares the shit out of everybody. <laughs> and uh, and then we cut to uh, Lena's mom in the car outside, waiting for her to walk in, <laughs> walk out of the house and come get in the car. She's like, I'm sorry, mom. She's like, get in the fucking car. <laughs> so the next morning, uh, Lena's like, yeah, I don't have time for breakfast. I'm I'm walking to school with a uh, <clears throat> a friend. <laughs> and the mom is like, oh yeah, who the hell's that? And then uh, the boy from the party shows up at her door. Mm -hmm. So then the mom's like, oh, no shit. Okay, that's cool. Uh, you know what? Since you guys are walking to school, why don't you take your uh, little sister? Take her with you. I could use the morning to run errands. And Lena's like, shit, no. <laughs> All right, go get her stuff upstairs. Okay. So then she's talking to the, the mom's talking to the boy, and she's like, so, uh, yeah, I do seances and shit. You ever had your palm read? And he's like, uh, no. And she's like, well, sit down. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt. And so she's like reading his lifelines and shit like that. And she's like, oh, so I see you're wearing a letterman jacket. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're a senior. You know, my daughter is a sophomore. And uh, he's like, oh, yes, but don't worry. I have pure intentions. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that's great. So let me explain about your lifeline because it's looking a little strange. And she, then she, like, takes her fingernail and digs it down into his palm real hard. And she's like, if this hand or any other fucking hand touches my daughter, your lifeline is going to end. <laughs> and he's like, I get it, I get it. Then the mom is out. And the night before, Lena had told her about the Ouija board. She was like, yeah, you should really pick that up for the act. So she goes out and she buys one. And then she's sitting down. She's circling job ads and shit. Like, secretary wanted, you know. So yeah. you know, she's definitely probably financially screwed. At that point... Uh, Doris is at school and they go to, uh, like a private Catholic school and, uh, she's getting bullied by a couple of, couple of loser kids, little bastards. And then, uh, the priest shows up who is played by, uh, Henry Thomas. He's the kid who played Elliot in E.T. Only he's a man. Oh, okay. So he's like, uh, yeah, you know why people, uh, say mean things? It's because they're afraid. And so we should feel sorry for them. She's like, yeah, I totally feel sorry for those bastard bullies. <laughs> and then the mom, uh, she's there, and you can like maybe see a little bit, a little bit of chemistry between the mom and the priest. Yeah. You know, like maybe, maybe if things were different. <laughs> so then later, uh, you know, Doris and her mom are talking. She's like, uh, "Yeah, you know, uh, his wife died, just like Daddy." And Lena's like, uh, "He's a priest. He's not married." Well, he became a priest after that. Like her picture is on his desk. So maybe we should give him a reading and, like, help him talk to his wife. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. So then the girls are upstairs, and Mom is, uh, she's testing out the Ouija board, okay? And she's figuring out how to, uh, how to trick it out so she can, like, move it with her, with, like, magnets on her knees and shit. Mm -hmm. So the two girls are upstairs, and they're in the same room. And, uh, the mom just starts talking, and she's like, are there any spirits here? And then up in the bedroom, Doris just like, and looks ahead and she just goes, yes. 
And then her sister Lena's like, what the fuck? What are you saying over there? And then downstairs, the mom is like, uh, what is your name? Can you hear me? And then upstairs, the little girl's like, Marcus, yes, yes, we can hear you. And then she's she's like, no, no. It's weird. So she's just like, she's saying everything that these spirits are, are would be answering back. Also, remember the three rules of the game, never play alone. Oh, yeah. Okay, so number one, that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then it cuts again later to uh, late at night. And the mom is playing with it again. Now she's like starting to think about her husband and stuff. So she like puts her fingers on the thing and she just goes, Roger, honey, honey, are you there? And nothing happens. Mm. So she's like, oh, well. So she gets up and she just walks away. Doesn't say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> so she walks away and then the, uh, I don't know, that, you know, that triangle thing with the lens in it. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you call that thing, but we'll just call it the lens. The cursor? Is that what it is? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> cursor is a good word. Yeah, okay. So the cursor just moves by itself over to no. <laughs> like it's not Roger. So then Doris wakes up at night and uh, she walks downstairs and she finds Ouija. And then she sits down at it. And she's like, I'm here. Are you there? And then it moves by itself and it spells out the word friend. And she's like, hi, friend. Now what? And uh, she's just like, it's like she's listening, right? And then she picks up the cursor and she fucking looks through the lens on it and uh, she just gasps. She's like, who are you? And then it cuts to Lena and she's sleeping. Okay. And her sheets are getting like pulled off of her from the bottom of the bed. Mm -hmm. Real slow, real slow, real slow. And then real fast. They're pulled all the way off. And she's like, what the fuck? Okay. So then she like leans down. You're expecting some scary shit to happen. But she just like picks her sheets up and uh, says, damn it, Doris. And then she goes back to sleep. So the next morning, uh, the priest is having a quick little meeting with the mom and uh, and Doris. And she's like, uh, he's like, yeah, has anybody, have you been helping her with her homework? And she's like, uh, no, you know, I know I should be. But uh, why is she uh, is she failing? And he's like, no, uh, actually, unless she learned how to write cursive. Somebody has been helping her, and he holds up the homework, and it's all this, like, super nice cursive writing her homework is done in. And she's like, who the hell helped you do this? And Doris is like, my new friend. And she's got this huge smile on her face, and everybody's looking at her like, what the fuck? And then Doris goes, I let her use my hand. <laughs> so they're getting home from the day, and then there's a big old foreclosure notice on the front door. Oh. So they're like, oh, man, you know, we're fucked. Fucking foreclosure thing. You know, are we going to have to move? And Lena's like, yo, I don't know. I don't know. And then Doris just goes, dad won't like this. I should tell him. So she runs over to the Ouija board and uh, she sits down. She starts trying to tell her fucking dad <laughs> that they're getting kicked out of the house. All right. So then she leaves and uh, Lena and the mom are discussing the dad. And we learned that, you know, he was killed by a drunk driver and, uh, you know, Doris doesn't really understand the the scope of what happened, you know, and uh, they're like, maybe that's good. Maybe that's a better thing. And then Doris fucking shows up behind them with this fucking bag full of money, <laughs> like full of all of this old fucking all, all this old looking cash. And it is like it's like a fucking fortune in the bag. It's so much money. She's like, where the hell did you find this? And she's like, uh, oh, well, over here. Well, who the hell showed you this? Daddy did. Daddy showed me. All right, well, uh, where? She's like, come on, I'll show you. She takes him down to the basement. The basement has this big uh, furnace in it, you know? And behind it, the wall is all made out of just... It's not like cinder block or anything. It's like stones, okay? Mm -hmm. Like weird fucking stones. You know, it's just weird. It's all like random. And uh, she pulls one of the stones out of the wall, and there's a fucking hole behind it. And she's like, yeah, there's. Uh, this is where it was. Daddy showed me. You know, it's from the people who lived here before. And so, yeah, that's where it is. And then the mom is like looking in the hole and Doris goes, there's no more in there. I checked. <laughs> She's like, oh, my God. And like, well, yeah, daddy told me. He told me with the board. And they're like, what? So then they all sit down and they're all they all all three of them use the Ouija board together. And Doris is leading it. You know, she's like leading the seance instead of the mother. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I can hear the spirits better at the board. I can hear them when I'm not here at the board. But with the board, I can definitely hear him a lot better so she's like daddy is it you and it says like yes and then they're all like oh i don't believe it i don't believe it and then the mom's like okay roger if this is you 
when I was pregnant, when I when I told you I was pregnant with Lena, where were you? And then the the cursor moves. Uh, you know, all their hands are on it, but it moves and it spells out shower. And then the mom's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and Lena's like, is it, is it right? And uh, yeah, yeah. The correct term for the cursor is a planchette. <laughs> planchette. <laughs> yeah. It says, don't call it anything but a planchette. Shit. <laughs> so uh, they're like, is it right? Is it right? And then the planchette... <laughs> Moves by itself over to yes. And then they're like, freaking out. And uh, the mom's like, Roger, are you really here? And then it like moves away from yes and moves back to yes. So then uh, later, Lena is talking to the mom. She's like, yo, Doris is totally faking this shit. I know you, you, you made that magnet thing on it. So, you know, fuck that. And the mom was like, no, it's real. I knew your father would take care of us. I just knew it. <laughs> so the mom's like all like, Got stars in her eyes and shit. Yeah. And then uh, Lena actually picks up the planchette and looks through. She's the one who looks through the lens and we can see something. She looks through it and then at the very side of her vision, we see a dark figure just standing there. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you like register it, it moves out of the way. Okay. So then the next morning, uh, Lena and the guy, they're uh, standing at school and they're talking and she's like, were you serious about homecoming? And he was like, yeah, I'd really love to take you to homecoming. I think we're going to fall in love. <laughs> and she was like, okay. And then they, uh, they're they about to kiss. And then uh, then the priest interrupts him. <laughs> He's like, not a whole lot of room for the Holy Spirit here. <laughs> like, yeah, sorry. Okay. So then uh, he's like, hey, Lena, I need to talk to you. Come here. And uh, they're in the in his office and he's like, yeah, Doris. She's been absent for like four days, you know, and usually when she's sick like this, your mom comes and gets her homework and stuff. She's like, yeah, she's not sick. She's like, well, what, what's going on? Yeah, she's working with our mom. And then it cuts to uh, Doris and the mom having, an, having another seance with a fucking stranger, <laughs> with a paying customer. Okay. And this woman is just crying. And she's, I guess she's talking about her dad. And she's like, I just want to know, is he proud of me? And then Doris turns to her and says in a fucking grown man's voice always <laughs> and everybody's like oh my god and the mom is like this is brand new the mom's all surprised and shit and she's like what the heck and then doris like puts her hand on her throat and she's like <laughs> that tickled <laughs> so then the lady's like oh my god this is wonderful i'll, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow <laughs> and then doris feels the back of her neck and she winces like there's some pain Okay, so then it cuts to her sleeping, and uh, she wakes up, and her neck is, like, really hurting her. And uh, she wakes up Lena, and Lena gets her some Tylenol or something like that. She's like, yeah, you know, don't worry. If it gets if it gets any worse, you know, then we'll wake up, Mom. Okay, but for right now, drink your water and go back to sleep. She's like, okay, yeah, it stings like a bee. Okay? Anyway, I guess she couldn't sleep. It still hurts. So uh, she gets up. She goes down to the Ouija board. And she's like, Daddy, my neck hurts. <sighs> you know? What's going on with my neck? So then she uh, she looks through the planchette and she's like scanning the room, scanning the room, scanning the room. And there's something bumps off to the side. Like, boom, boom. And so she she's not looking through it anymore. And she's like, oh, man. And she, she like follows that noise and she walks over to a mirror. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then, then she looks through the planchette again <laughs> and looks into the mirror. And in the mirror, she sees herself looking through the lens and then... Behind her is this big, giant, fucking black ghoul with glowing yellow fucking eyes. <laughs> is it scary? Oh, yeah. It's fucking scary, man. Uh, it reminded me, didn't look quite like it, but it's like Fright Factor reminded me of the first time you saw the lipstick demon in uh, Insidious. The first time. Where he's like pointing his finger and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wait, this guy looks like he's made out of a fucking oil slick or something. Mm-hmm. He's just like black like tar, okay, and these glowing yellow eyes. Anyway, so uh, she screams, okay, and then he like covers her fucking mouth with his hand and then bends her backwards, all right? So then in the real world, that's that's what you can see in the mirror. In the real world, all you see is her bent over backwards, okay, all by herself, yeah. and her eyes are all fucking white, and her mouth is like open twice as wide as any normal human. <laughs> So then she's like bending all the way back down to the floor. So, but what was really happening was the, uh, the, the, I don't want to say demon, but 
know, the ghoul, okay, yeah. is like, you know, he was putting him, he was possessing her, I guess, but he was like laying her down onto the floor. That's what was actually happening there. Okay. So he lays her down, and then we cut to uh, Lena, okay, and she's sleeping in bed, and then uh, she rolls over, and then all of a sudden behind her is Doris with fucking white eyes whispering into her ear. But you don't hear what she's whispering. It's just like, and that you will find out later is uh, that's how they get in you. <laughs> They're whispering in your ear. Then we see Lena. Uh, she wakes up. Doris isn't there anymore, and she walks into the bathroom, okay? And, uh, you know, she's getting herself a glass of water. She's looking in the mirror. And uh, she hears maybe a noise behind her. You know, might be something in the shower. She doesn't check like a dumbass. Mm -hmm. But it turns out not to be the problem. Because then she looks back at herself in the mirror. And her lips are uh, starting to melt a little bit. They're melting. Okay? <laughs> she uh, she touches them with her finger. And, like, there's, like, strings coming off it. Like, they're sticky. Okay? Yeah. And then her lips fucking seal shut together. Oh. And she's fucking screaming. But... With no mouth. Yeah. So it's like, ah, oh, fuck. And then her eyes start turning white and shit. And then all of a sudden she fucking wakes up in bed. Okay. And she's okay. It was just a, a fucking nightmare. Then we see Doris and she is back at school. She's in the schoolyard. And then there's those two fucking bully kids. And they're sitting over and they're staring at her. Because she's just like standing in the middle of the playground, staring off into space. And they're like, look at that loser. Yeah, all right, let's 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 do something. Let's screw with her. And then one kid like pulls a slingshot out of his pocket. <laughs> okay, and the other guy's like, yeah, let's get her. You know, this is like super dangerous shit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he fucking loads it up with a rock and he fucking points it at her. And then she just like turns her head and stares at him. And then he like can't stop himself. He's turning the slingshot around and aiming it at his own face. And then the other kid is like, dude, what the hell are you doing? And then it just cuts to Doris's face. And then you hear the kid fired it at himself. Oh. And then everybody's fucking screaming. Like he probably lost his eye or something like that. Happens off camera. And we never hear anything about it again. Yeah. Okay. Like we don't even hear anybody saying like, did you hear show and show lost his eye? Like that was just it. <laughs> okay. So then it cuts to, uh, it's nighttime, and the mom, she's all dolled up, and she's getting ready to go out for the night, okay? And she's talking to Lena, and she's like, yeah, you're going to be babysitting. You know, here's the number for the restaurant I'm going to be at. It's cool. And then uh, Lena's like, oh, man, mommy, you know, she's she's going to go out on a date. That's cool, you know? Uh, all right, go ahead, mom, go, go. So the mom goes to this restaurant, walks inside, really nice restaurant, walks over to the table. Who is she meeting for dinner? The fucking priest. <laughs> Who is in his collar and everything, and it turns out it is innocent. Okay. He's like, I invited you here. To, I need to talk. I want to talk to you about Doris. But before that, they had a little bit of a, like flirty conversation, and uh, she's she's talking about, uh, oh yeah, you know, sometimes he's like, it must be so tough being a mom, you know, single mom. And she's like, yeah, sometimes I don't even heat up the spaghettios. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh shit, you know what? Could you forget I said that because I'm I'm really not a bad mom. And he's like, no, don't worry. I eat cold spaghettios twice a week. You know, I I, I keep a whole bunch of them at church. Uh, at that point, we cut to Lena opening up her front door, and it's that guy, the guy she likes. Mm -hmm. I don't know his name. We'll just call him Guy. And he walks in, and she's like, yeah, uh, thanks for coming. You know, uh, anyway. My bedroom is up there. Go up there and check it out, all right? And then he's like, yeah, okay, cool. So he walks upstairs, and then Lena turns over to Doris, who is sitting on the couch, just, like, turned around watching them like a scared puppy, like, you're doing wrong shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lena's just like, I swear, if you tell anything, I'm going to take every one of your dolls, and I'm going to melt them into like, just a, a pile of plastic and hair, okay? And then Doris just, like, nods her head, yes. <laughs> Uh, then we cut back to uh, the priest, and uh, he's like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not an expert on the occult, because uh, the mom is now telling him what's going on with Doris. She's like, yeah, she is for real talking to spirits, and I was wondering uh, if you would like to talk to your wife through her. And he's like, whoa, whoa, you know, how do you even know about that? You know, oh, people talk, blah, blah, blah. So then they uh, they both start reminiscing about their dead spouses, and then you you realize that they're like... Into each other? Oh, big time. Okay. okay. So uh, at that point, the priest just goes, yeah, <laughs> maybe in another life. 
And then the mom is like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> and she's like, oh, shit. And uh, they're both drinking their wine. And then the priest goes, oh, here's to another life. <laughs> So then it cuts back to uh, Lena's room. She's got that guy in there. And they're flirting and stuff. And he's like, oh, you have a an awesome house. You know, this house has great bones. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, oh, sorry. That's my dad coming out. You know, he uh, he's an architect. Like, he, he his idea of a good time is taking me and my brother around and looking at houses. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's stupid. So, you know, they're flirting and stuff. And uh, she's like, well, my mom's about to be home. And he's like, wait, I thought we had another hour. She's like, yeah, I'm not taking any chances. And he's like, oh, we're like Romeo and Juliet. So then they kiss. Good night. And she's all like uh, fluttery and stuff. And she just like lays back on her bed and is like, <sighs> and he just like leaves the room and goes down to let himself out. Before he does, Doris just appears behind him. And she's like, hey, you want to hear something cool? <laughs> and he's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Wow, you scared me there. You know, didn't know you were behind me. And uh, she's like, do you know what it feels like to be strangled to death? And he's like, what? So then she tells him <laughs> and she lists through all this shit. She's like, first you feel the pressure. You feel the pressure on your neck and everything. And then you get a, a, a everything in your mouth tastes sour. Okay. And then the lights, the lights appear that they start going out. Right. And then you just get burning, burning in your chest and everything. And then it all just turns to ice. And then you see stars. And the very last thing you feel is cold. And then he's like looking at her like, what the fuck? And then she's like, good night, Romeo. And then he, he leaves. Then we cut to Lena wandering around the house. And uh, she actually finds Doris sitting on her bedroom floor, uh, staring off into space and doing a whole shit ton of automatic writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not looking at the paper or anything. And her hand is just moving a fucking mile a minute across the page writing. And then Lena, instead of investigating, just walks away. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> She turns around, she goes back to her room uh, and finds her doll that her, her dad had given her or whatever. And the doll's mouth has been sewn shut. And so she flips out and she's like, what the fuck, Doris? You knew dad gave this to me. Why'd you fucking do this? Fuck you, fuck you. And then the mom comes in. She's like, whoa, what's going on here? And then, uh, you know, Lena shows it to the mom. The mom's like, Doris, did you do this? And she's like, no, daddy did it. Daddy did it to stop the voices. And they're like, what the hell? And Lena and mom, uh, they start fighting. And uh, Lena's like, you know, something's fucking wrong with her. And the mom is like, no, no, she has a gift. She has a gift and it's a wonderful opportunity. And you should just give yourself to it. The priest didn't tell her, you're doing something fucking wrong here? Nope. Okay. Which, as you know, like, uh, I, th I think any normal priest would have said that immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he has like a little crush. Okay. So the mom's totally drank the Kool-Aid and she's like, Fuck it, you should join us, you know? And uh, Lena's like, no, damn it, she's faking this shit. You know, something's fucking wrong here. She's like, no, 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 I asked her questions that only your dad would know. So, uh, you know, it's totally r real. You know, if, how did she know the answers to that? How do you explain that? And then Lena's like, okay, you got me there. I can't explain that. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, here's the thing. Check this out. If that really is dad talking to her, like, can't you see that Doris is changing? Like, she's uh, turning into, like, a freaky, scary little bitch. So, if this is really dad, why would he want to change her like this? Why would he want to do this to her at all? And then the mom's like, I don't know. <laughs> Next morning, it's time for school, and uh, Doris doesn't want to go. So, she's, like, screaming, no, no, I don't want to go. I just want to stay here and talk to my friends. Okay, so then the mom's like, yeah, Lena, go upstairs and uh, get her stuff. She's going to school. So while she's upstairs packing her stuff, she finds the papers that are, uh, they've been stuffed under her bed. So she goes to school and then she gives them to Father Tom. And uh, she's like, yeah, Doris wrote them. Uh, yeah, does, uh, is there anybody here at this school that speaks Polish? And the priest is like, uh, I don't know. Why? Because they're in Polish. <laughs> I don't know how Lena knew that, but she did. She's the one who, who said that to the priest. Yeah. He's like, well, I think Sister Show and Show is from Poland. I don't know. I'll have her look at him. And then uh, he's about to, she's about to walk out of the room and he's like, hey, what are these? And then Lena's like, hopefully nothing, father. Hopefully nothing. So then later that night, the priest knocks on the, the door of the house and the mom is all like caught off guard and definitely like happy to see the priest. It's like, oh, uh, okay. You know, uh, wow. 
And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm just in the neighborhood, and uh, I decided to take you up on that offer for the reading. And me as a as the viewer, I'm like, what? A fucking priest would do that shit. <laughs> but it's cool. Maybe he's got a plan. You know, I figured I'd see Doris's uh, her, her gift firsthand, and uh, so they 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 start doing a fucking seance. All right. They're like, uh, okay, what was your wife's name? It's like Gloria. So then uh, Doris is like, all right, Gloria, are you here? Is it you? We're trying to reach Gloria. Are you here? And then it spells out the word darling. And then Doris is like, it's really, it's almost, it's it's kind of hard to hear her. And then it spells out, you miss me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, darling, I do miss you. And he's like, uh, what is my wife's middle name? And then it spells out L-Y-N-N. And Doris is like, Lynn, that's her middle name. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's right, okay. So uh, the planchette just moves and it spells out, forgive me. And he's like, yes, yes, of course I forgive you, but... Uh, you know, for what? What do you want my forgiveness for? And it says, the fight. And he's like, yes, I forgive you. But what was that fight about? And then Doris is just like kind of staring at him. And she says, that's not important. That's not important. Anyway, and then the planchette starts moving, 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 moving real furiously. And it spells out, don't hide behind the collar. And the the mom is like reading it as it's being spelled out. And it says, don't hide behind the collar. I want you to be, and then in this grown woman's voice, Doris goes, happy. And then everybody fucking looks at her, and the, the priest is like blown away, right? And it's like, damn. Even the priest like sees what's going on here. So then the priest is like, yeah, you know, uh, this isn't the only reason. This is fun. Thank you, Doris. But this isn't the only reason I'm here. Uh, uh, Lena actually got herself in trouble at school, and I'd like to talk to you about it in private. Both of you, actually. You know, mo- the mom and Lena. So then they go up into the the little girl's room and the priest is like my wife's middle name was Catherine not Lynn <laughs> and uh she's like wait what and he's like my mother's middle name is Lynn and she's like well you know sometimes the medium you know they hear so many voices it can be confusing and he's like no 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 something else is going on here <laughs> and then he quotes I, th- I think it quotes like John 4 1 and it, you know it's all about testing the spirits you know don't just trust spirits if they talk to you and shit you gotta put you gotta test them okay and uh, he's like, you know, when I asked what my wife's middle name was, I purposely thought in my mind over and over the word Lynn, okay? And that is what she spoke back to me. So she was fucking reading my thoughts. You know, that that's not my wife's name. And then the mom is like, hey, you brought me up here to tell me that my daughter is a fraud? <laughs> that's, that's what this is about? And he's like, no, 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 no. I don't think she's a fraud, but I think she's fucking plagued by darkness. Okay. She ain't talking to real spirits and shit, or, or, or normal spirits anyway. And he's like, yeah, see? And when uh, when I asked what the fight was about, I totally t- turned my, my mind to static. I put nothing there. And that's when she just changed the subject. You know, she couldn't read my mind, so she just moved on. And he's like, I don't think she's a fraud. And then it cuts to uh, Doris downstairs with white eyes and a wide open mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point... That guy that likes Lena, he he knocks on the door. So then her white eyes and, and wide mouth, they go away, and she opens the door. And he's like, yeah, hey, is Lena here? You know, I just want to hang out with her, and, you know, I wanted to see her. She's like, yeah, no, she's not here. She and my mom, they're talking to the man. And uh, he's like, okay, so I should come back? She's like, no, 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 you should totally wait. You should you should be in here and wait. You know, they'll be back very soon. And he's like, yeah, okay. And she's like, let me show you something cool. There's treasure in the walls here. And he's like, uh, all right. Yeah, I heard of something about that, you know. I'm glad you guys don't have to move because of that. So what are you talking about? And she's like, yeah, there's more. Let me show you where it is. And she takes him down to the fucking basement. At that point, upstairs, the priest pulls out the uh, the letters. And he's like, yeah, sister so-and-so translated them. They are, uh, yeah, they're all in Polish. Uh, and your daughter wrote this shit. Okay, and they are written by a man named Marcus. Okay, and he was in a concentration camp. You know, in fucking Nazi Germany and shit. And, uh, you know, after the war was over, he, he, he came to America. Uh, but he ended up losing his mind. And he ended up in an insane asylum. Okay, now, all the doctors in the asylum, he actually recognized one of them as the devil's doctor from this concentration camp that he was in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that doctor recognized him. And then he, all of a sudden, took him out of the asylum one day and brought him to his own house. 
which was this house. Oh, shit. And in the letters, it describes a secret room that is down in the basement where he was taken and where hundreds of other fuckers were taken and all of the uh, experiments that the devil's doctor was doing on them, they continued in the fucking basement of this house. Okay? Oh. Yeah. And he would cut out their tongues and shit so they couldn't scream and make noise and they all fucking died in the basement of this fucking house. And they're like, oh my God. Okay? And then he's like, yeah, yeah. No, there's more. Then the letters in great detail describe the murder of Marcus. He describes his own murder. And then that's not the end of the letters. They keep going. And they talk about what has happened to him since. Okay? And they're like, what the fuck? All right, so things get like real serious real quick here. So then downstairs, Doris is like, yeah, yeah. When I found the money in this hole, it takes him to the hole. Okay? She's like... uh, when I found the money in the hole, I also found some jewelry, uh, but I put that back. So maybe you should stick your hand in and find it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So like he, he puts his hand in, and this happens in tandem with uh, them talking about the devil's doctor, but he pulls out an old doctor's bag, okay? And he opens it up, and inside are like all the driver's licenses and shit from, and all the identification from all of these patients that that old doctor had down there. Jeez. That have all died down there. And then behind him, Doris makes what I will now call, just call, her freak face, <laughs> which is white <laughs> eyes and a wide open mouth. And she's right behind him. And uh, she just says, yeah, you were right about this house. Good bones. And then right then, a fucking skull falls out of the hole. And it's like, Aah! And then Doris grabs the kid's fucking head and pulls it back and then is whispering in his ear. <laughs> so he's getting infected. He's getting possessed. At that point, Father Tom is like, yeah, things are a lot more serious. Uh, we, we're not just going to exercise your daughter right here. I've already called the archdiocese. Okay. So, uh, you know, let's, uh, and then Lena's like, whoa, 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 stop. Okay. So check this out. Here's the thing. All those questions that we asked and that were answered correctly. Okay. That means all of those spirits have been in this house watching us since we were born and shit. Now, don't say another word because that means if they were watching us then, they are fucking watching us now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so they're like, oh shit, where the hell's Doris? So they go downstairs, and she's not there. <laughs> and the house is all dark and shit. And they're standing there on the bottom floor of the house, and then they can hear a couple of little noises upstairs, like, boom, 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 boom. And they're like, what is that? And somebody's like, Doris? Doris? Nothing. So then the mom is like, okay, listen, I'm going to go upstairs and get her, and... uh I, I'm, I'm going to bring her downstairs. And then all of a sudden, that fucking kid guy fucking drops down out of the fucking ceiling. And he's hanging by the neck and he's fucking dead. All right. All right. So Doris killed him. <laughs> or he hung himself, I guess. Lena starts freaking out. She's crying and shit. And uh, the mom's like, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. And then you just hear this old timey music. This old timey fucking record player music coming on from somewhere. And, uh. They can hear it coming out of the vent. And they're like, "What? where's that coming from? And then the mom's like, the basement. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, shit. So then they go over to the basement door. And uh, the mom's like, Lena, you stay here. And Lena's like, nope. That is fucking retarded. Does, it seems to me like splitting up right now would be the stupidest idea in the world. And the mom's like, okay, you got me there. So there's like a little real world you know, thinking there. I was very happy to hear that. Yeah. So then the priest, the mom, and Lena, are they all go down to the basement together. She's like, all right. But uh, the mom says, we're going to burn this fucking Ouija board in the furnace. So then they go down there. They're in the basement, and you can hear the music, but it's not playing from that room. It's still faint, like it's on the other side of a wall. And she's like, all right, let's burn it. Let's burn this thing. And then all the lights in the basement fucking go out. So they walk over to the, uh, the hole, okay? And the mom sees the skull like sitting there in the hole and she's like oh my god look at that and then the priest fucking gets down and he like shines a light in there and he's looking inside and then we see his face from the other side of the hole and the camera pans back and it's full of skeletons and shit Ugh. and he's like oh no they're in there and they, they look at him and he goes all of them and then you know you see all these fucking bones and everything and then fucking Lena looks at the mom she's like we played it in a graveyard <laughs> <laughs> Like, that rule matters. 
<laughs> Neither of the others were ever paid attention to at all throughout the entire movie. No one ever said goodbye, not one time, when they used the Ouija board. Not once. Uh-huh. Okay? Well, they and, broke all the rules, Yeah, right? they broke all of them. Okay. Then you can hear Doris talking from the vent, and she's like, Mommy, Mommy, I need you, Mommy. And then uh, the priest goes over to the vent, and he's like, All right, check it out. You know how we were just talking about splitting up is a bad idea? You guys stay here. I'll go in. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so the priest crawls through the vent and uh, he exits into the fucking doctor's secret room, which is on the other side of the wall. And it's got an operating table and a whole bunch of fucking knives and torture instruments and shit. And he's walking around. And yep, there's a record player over in the corner playing this music. And as soon as he walks over to it, it like slows down <laughs> and then stops. <laughs> So then he's looking at the knives on the table and stuff. And then you hear Doris behind him who has her freak face. And she's like, that's where they all died. And he turns around and he starts he starts trying to exercise her. He's like, Christ compels you. Power of Christ compels you. So she's like, she throws shit at him and stuff. And then all of a sudden she just like flies at him. And then it cuts away. <laughs> okay. And then it cuts to the priest crawling out back out of the vent into the room with... Uh, with the mom and Lena. And they're like, yeah, wait, where's Doris? And he's like, uh, she's, uh, she's with them now. She's in the darkness. <laughs> and, uh, but don't worry. She, uh, she showed me everything. And he turns around and he's got white eyes. Okay. And, uh, he just like starts fucking chasing them and they start running away from the priest. Okay. They both run upstairs. Uh, Lena actually makes it out of the basement door and she's running off to the, to the front door of the house. But the priest catches the mom mm-hmm. right there at the top of the steps. And, uh, he turns her around and you get, you know, he's about to like whisper in her ear or something like that on a possessor. And then she just goes, Tom, Tom, don't do this. Don't do this, Tom. And then he like, whoa. He has a moment of clarity and his eyes come back and he's like, you have got to. And then he just like pushes her out of the basement door and slams it shut himself and like traps himself in the basement. Yeah. And then right then he looks up and Doris is up on the ceiling with her white eyes and her wide open mouth. And, uh, you know, she's just like she's sitting on the ceiling like she has gravity to it. And then she just like crawls at him. Okay, and, and like hits him, and then he like flies down the stairs and rolls and then breaks his neck and dies. Aww. And we say goodbye to Henry Thomas. All right. Then Doris comes out, and she is coming after Lena and the mom, and she is like crawling and running along the walls and shit. It's all fucking crazy looking. She got them white eyes. She got that wide mouth. It's fucking scary. And uh, Lena is trying to run away from her when all of a sudden the hanging kid like jumps down he's he still has the rope around his neck so it's like he's just like a maniac possessed guy on a leash okay yeah. and he like jumps down and he grabs lena and then like bounces back up onto the landing of the stairs and throws her down and then he's just like hanging dead again it's it's weird so then uh doris goes up and grabs lena and she's whispering into her ear and then the mom starts talking to the possessed little girl. And she's like, don't do this, you know, don't take my children. You know, if you if you want somebody, you know, what do you want from her? What do you want? And he's like, uh, the or Doris is speaking through the mouth of like the mad doctor, the, through the voice. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, she gives us a voice. We need the vessel. We need the vessel. And then she's like, well, then take me, okay? Don't take my children. Just take me. And then all of a sudden, Doris is up behind her, grabs her by the neck, and just goes, we'll take all of you. And then, like, pulls her out of frame. Okay. So, uh, you know, she was knocked out or something like that. And she wakes up, and she's being dragged across the basement floor. And she she wakes up, and she looks over, and she sees the dead priest. She's like, oh, shit. At that point, we see Lena back on the stairs. And somebody picks her up, okay, in a nice, loving way. And then, like, puts her in her own bed. And then she opens her eyes, and she sees it's her dad for a second. Okay, she's like, Dad, Dad. And then he fades away. Then she gets a flashback of when she found the doll, okay, with the uh, the mouth sewn shut. Yeah. So she's like, now she's like, it's almost like she's in a ghost in the room when that argument was happening. And she sees herself yelling at Doris, you know, why'd you do this? Why'd you do this? And then Doris says, I didn't do it. Daddy did it to stop the voices. 
And then Lena's like, oh, shit. And then she turns around and sees her dad sitting there, like, sewing the doll's mouth shut. So it really was her dad that did it. Mm -hmm. So then she realizes that's what she has to do to Doris. (laughs) And at that point, we're in the basement, and... uh, the mom is on the table. She's strapped down, and Doris has knives. <laughs> and, like, she's the mad doctor, and she's about to cut her all up and shit. And uh, she starts talking about daddy and everything. And then she's like, uh, yeah, daddy, you know, he's 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 with all of the dead people now. And he does nothing all the time but scream and scream and scream. And then all of a sudden, Lena's behind her, and she fucking hits her in the fucking head with something. And then uh, Doris goes flying. And she's like, yeah, sorry, Doris. So then she lets the mom off of the table and then she immediately grabs one of those big weird stitching needles and she gets down onto uh she like sits on doris's chest and starts fucking sewing her lips shut (laughs) and as that's happening doris her eyes go white and her mouth opens up and down in her mouth you can see one of the glowing yellow eyes and then behind lena you just see a whole shit ton of those black ghouls, okay? Not just one anymore. There's a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, grabbing Lena, and they're, like, spitting, like, their black spirit goo into her mouth and shit. Yeah. But Lena's, like, she's hell-bent on trying to save her sister, so she just keeps sewing it shut, keeps sewing it shut, even though all that shit's happening to her, okay? And then the spirits finally, like, end up, like, throwing her across the room. And then for a minute, we see Doris laying on the floor, and she her her mouth is not sewn shut. And she wakes up, and she's totally fine. And then she looks over, and she's like, Daddy. And then her dad is standing there. And she and uh, he just, like, holds his hand out or whatever. And uh, she takes his hand, and then we cut back to the real world, and Doris is laying on the floor with her mouth sewn shut. The mom gets up, and she sees her, and she's like, Doris, Doris, honey, honey, honey. She walks over to her, and uh, she starts trying to wake her up, and she can't. Mm-hmm. So Doris is fucking dead. And she's like, no, no, baby, no, no, no. And then Lena gets up from across the room. And she's like, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. I had to do it. I had to stop the voices. It's the only way we could save her. So then she kneels down next to her mom, and they're both just looking at Doris. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, Lena just turns to her mother, and her eyes are fucking white, and then she just stabs her mother in the stomach with one of the knives from the table. Aww. Yeah, and the mom's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so now she lays down, and she's dying. And uh, all of a sudden, Lena's eyes go clear again, and she's like, oh, my God, Mom, no, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mom, 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 no, don't go, don't go. And then the mom is like, Roger, Doris. And then standing behind Lena is the rest of her family. So, you know, they're dead and they're ghosts, and they're they're there to get the mom. And she's like, no. Lena's crying, man. She's like, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then you just hear this, Lena, Lena, Lena. And then Lena wakes up in a different set of clothes now it's in uh in a in a well-lit room and she is a fucking patient in an insane asylum and it was her doctor sitting there getting her attention lena lena you know where were you just now Mm -hmm. and uh lena's like oh i'm sorry you know what what were you saying and he's like yeah uh i was just asking you where you think we can find your sister doris you know because she's gone she's missing okay ever since what happened with your mother And then Lena's like, oh, yeah, my mother. Well, my mother would know where Doris is. And you're like, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, well, uh, we can't ask your mother. You telling me you don't remember that? You don't remember, uh, you know, killing your mother? (laughs) And she's like, oh, well, listen, here's what I know about my mother. And the doctor's like, yeah, you've been here six months, okay? You killed your mother and your daughter, uh, your your sister is missing. Uh, That's what we're trying to find out, where she is. And she's like, well, the only thing I I can really tell you about my mother is uh, she always wanted to know that we weren't alone, okay, after after dad died. And now she knows. And he's like, Jesus, you are fucked up. Then you hear hear Lena in a voiceover. And she's like, yeah, we weren't alone. We never were. And I will never be alone again. And then it shows her being taken to... uh, to her room, which is just a fucking empty room with a bed, okay, and she just sits on the bed and stares off into space, and uh, she's like, I'll never be alone again, and at that point, she goes over to the corner of the room, pulls the carpet back to expose the, uh, the concrete floor, and then she bites her fucking hand so it's bloody, and then she draws on the floor a fucking Ouija board, okay, Mm -hmm. 
and then she takes some glasses, I guess, that she stole from somebody, and then she she breaks the lens out of one of them and holds it in between her fingers, which is now in like a uh, like a triangle shape and has made her own planchette with her hands. Yeah. And then she holds it over the Ouija blood on the floor, and she just asks, Doris, are you there? And then it cuts to the doctor who was talking to her, and he's like walking down the hallway, you know, making his rounds of the hallway. He passes this one certain door, and he didn't look in it, but we saw, okay, as we passed it, inside that window was uh, fucking Lena, and Doris standing there together, both with wide eyes and like wide open mouths and shit. Okay. And the doctor like, he's walking and he's walking and he stops and he's like, what the fuck? And then he goes back to that window and he looks in and this time Lena, it's only Lena and she's got clear eyes, but she's like all like drugged out looking and she's just standing right up there next to the fucking window, just staring at him. And he's like looking at her and he's just like, Jesus, you know, she's so screwed. She's so fucking crazy now anyway and then he turns around and behind him is fucking doris on the ceiling with white eyes and she's running at him and then the movie ends <laughs> <laughs> it did not have the strongest ending all right but you Sounds know what like it tried to do something with yeah the it did i still say this this was a good movie i enjoyed it a lot yeah they had a lot of really good scary shit with this little girl you know they they played on the whole Sweet, innocent, little, blonde, blue-eyed chickie with the creepy, crazy smile that's too big for her fucking face Yeah. type shit. They had a whole lot of that. It was cool. So all that stuff really happened? Yeah. Okay. That's what I got out of it, anyway. They could. They never found a body of Doris? Uh-uh. All right. Huh? No idea. No idea why. Maybe she wasn't really dead? I still don't understand how anyone thought she was dead when they sewed her lips shut. Yeah, it's like... uh so maybe it's she like, wasn't dead. Maybe she wasn't, but in that scene, it's like she died from like the sudden release of not having the shit inside of her anymore. Okay. And remember, like the dad spirit, he was there to like get her and shit. I don't know how they didn't find Doris's body. Yeah. But Doris's body was on the fucking ceiling of the hospital, running around after the doctor. Okay. Okay, so I think she probably is dead. But is possessed and yeah, lurking in the shadows or something. I don't fucking know, man. Hmm. Pretty bleak. They said yeah. there there were no jump scares in this. There was like maybe one. Yeah. Okay, but the rest of it was just like good old fashioned tension and fright. Yeah, and then just like freaky fucking visuals. So there you have it. Ouija: Origin of Evil on Movies with Ron. What do you think, Rick? It was all right. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Good job, man. Oh, thank you. All right. Now, for what you've all been waiting for, what's the name of the game? This might we, be the only time we play it, but does it have to have a name? No, I don't think it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> game show movies. <laughs> Should I go first? Rick? I'll Ooh. go first. All right. Mine is Jeopardy. With a twist. Do you <laughs> think they're all going to have a twist? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's all based on, uh, based on the game show Jeopardy, except... Uh, there's like an like an evil government has taken over, and there is a dictator, and he has re he has rewritten history and all the history books, and uh, everybody's pretty much prisoners. But if you go onto this game show Jeopardy, and you recite all of the uh, if you answer all the questions right about like the fake history, yeah, you get to live and your family goes free or something. Uh huh. And uh, well, so, if you don't, you die. So it's all fake. It's all fake. Until some guy starts doing like resistance stuff and <laughs> <laughs> telling the truth and telling the truth, <laughs> and it's uh taking down Killian. <laughs> Shit, it is that, isn't it? <laughs> the Running Man. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Why not defying the false history? Yes, that the oppressive government has established. Yes. All right. But uh, and it's live, so everyone everyone's watching them. <laughs> Kind of, sort of. It winds up being like... It's know. like a Hunger Games type scenario? Kind yeah. of, sort of, yeah. But standing behind a podium. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it leaves the podium eventually, and the dictator gets taken out. But along the way, you learn a lot of history that's been forgotten. Okay. All right. Who plays the dictator? Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, who's that guy from the show Hannibal? Mads Mikkelsen? Sure. 
All right. All right. Yeah, Pretty good. Eh, yeah. Um... I chose the price is right. <laughs> okay. After the world has ended and the nukes have been launched, <laughs> the fallout is everywhere. There's one lone standing pillar of organized civilization. And it is the studio that films The Price is Right. All right. I guess they don't really film it, but it's... And everyone sits in the seats, and they're all, like, wearing, like, Fallout gear. Mm -hmm. But they're all still, like, wearing their name tags and be like, Fuck you! Yeah, <laughs> Come on <laughs> It's the down. only thing in the world to be excited about. Yeah. <laughs> the host is uh, Drew Carey. Okay. But he's part cyborg. All right. Nice. And uh, the winner gets to go... In the underground bunker. Okay. Called the Colony, where everything is nice and pristine. All right. And the ruler of this colony is Bob Barker. <laughs> <laughs> he lives underneath the Price is Right. Okay. He runs his own world down there. And if you win, you get to go down and be a citizen. All right, cool. So it's like none of these uh, products, because the whole thing is based on guessing the prices of stuff. Yeah. So none of the products have uh, any purpose in the world anymore but you still have to like guess the right price is it still based on like dollars <laughs> yeah i don't know okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's worth 140 nuka cola caps <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the end when they're spinning the big wheel it's like more devious it's like uh spin the wheel face the deal kind of <laughs> shit <laughs> there's like bad parts of it where it's like you have to kill someone in the audience or something yeah. like that <laughs> it's like cutthroat <laughs> right but it's still like all the because there's like a hundred like mini games yeah. throughout that show and uh everyone loves plinko yeah plinko of death so uh the the main character who's like this i don't know 30 something woman who uh, plays her um charlie theron <laughs> uh, michelle rodriguez Ooh, tough. Okay. Like playing a game show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, she's playing Plinko. She's doing a good job. But then uh, a dude breaks out. He yeah. breaks out from the floor. And he's like, they're, they're going to eat you if you win. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like he exposes that it's like a farm to get food. Yeah, right? Okay. So the winner is uh, a worthy of getting eaten. Right? So um, only the best will do for Bob. <laughs> yeah. Who still only walks, eat the winners. Yeah. Who oh, still fuck. walks around with his weird microphone. <laughs> yeah. You're going to taste good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so Havoc kind of breaks out. And uh, I guess Drew Carey is like one of the first like bad guys they got to take down. Yeah. Uh, so they get down in the colony. And uh, they're, they're like chasing after Bob Barker. Right? So it's like. Is it just Bob Barker alone down there eating the winners? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think there's people, but they're not like a threat. Okay. Um, they're just other rich people. Yeah. They're the cooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cooks. <laughs> but the whole colony is based on all of those mini games, uh -huh. right? So when they're chasing Bob Barker, they're like chasing him through Cliffhanger and, and <laughs> the, the Wild West game and yeah. like. Uh, home run, and it's all those all those Price is Right themed games yeah. uh, that uh, Bob Barker is like running. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I don't He's know. He's just I'm like getting... made his own fucking Price is Right <laughs> yeah. mad paradise downstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. She finally corners him, but he gets the drop on her. But then the guy, the guy, the original guy who broke up from the floor and exposed everything was uh, Adam Sandler. Uh -huh. So uh, he saves her, and he's like, the price is wrong, bitch, and kills Bob Barker. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. All right, cool. <laughs> I like it, man. That's good. Yeah. What you got? All right. I hope this is not too far before you guys' time. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've never heard of the name of the show, that's okay. But I think you'll recognize it. Um, the game show I picked was called Press Your Luck. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the game show that had this. Come on, big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the one with the whammies, okay, where you answer a few trivia questions and then you, you gain spins. Then you then use these spins on this random game board where it's got prizes and also whammies, okay? Uh -huh. Now, as it spins around, you just stop it with the buzzer and it either lands on a prize, which is money, or it lands on a whammy, which takes away... 
your money. All right? So, the movie that I have is based on Press Your Luck, but it is a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sequel to the Press Your Luck movie. My sequel is called Double or Nothing. <laughs> Okay. It's like a Leonard Part 8 thing. Yeah. Okay. Leonard Part 6. <laughs> now, check this out. While I was researching this game show, guys, I found some shit out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that the game show Press Your Luck like, had like a gigantic fucking scandal that happened about it in real life. Okay. And there was this one contestant named Michael Larson who was like unemployed and he just sat in his house all fucking day watching Press Your Luck over and over with a VCR. And he was like freeze framing it and shit. And through the use of freeze framing, he fucking figured out that it's not random and there are patterns to the board. Oh, wow. Okay, In real life, he figured this out. There's like five different patterns that he had to fucking memorize. He memorized them, went, borrowed money to go to L.A., got on the fucking show, and then broke the fucking bank on this show. Now, oh, the show was only on for like four years in the 80s, okay? And back then on a game show, the highest prize anybody ever really won was like 40 grand, uh -huh. okay? In the 80s, that was a whole shit ton of fucking money, all right? Now, this motherfucker won $110,000. Wow. Okay? It was like history was made, okay? They uh -huh. launched a huge fucking investigation afterwards where they fucking found out what he did, Okay, and then so it like went to court and everything, and it turned out that the court ruled fucking yeah. looking at the shit and, and just learning the pattern yeah. is not cheating, and right. he was allowed to keep the money. Totally. Yeah, wow. but the studio tried to fucking take his ass down. <laughs> that sounds like a movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, they actually made a big documentary about it. Oh, okay? wow. Now, the studio, they still talk about him like he's a fucking piece of shit. Okay, yeah. and like the host of the show, he's like, he made monkeys out of all of us. <laughs> Good he, for him. He was a bastard. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> and like... The guy ended up dying, but uh, like his his brother, like naturally, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he died years later. Like he used his money, and they were like, "What are you going to do with the money?" He's like, "I'm going to buy real estate so I can never work again." <laughs> and like he did okay. All right. Yeah. Now his brother is on the documentary, and it's like, "Yeah, my brother was like a lovable loser. Like nobody liked him because he was like he was like really smart, but he like never applied himself, and he just always wanted to get rich quick, which is exactly fucking what he did." Yeah. It's fucking amazing what this asshole did. <laughs> okay, so in honor of that fucking <laughs> bastard genius, the name of the hero of my movie is Michael Larson. Okay. He is played by Ben Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the crazy brother in uh, Hell or High Water. Yeah. Okay, then we got Satan. <laughs> He's played by, played by Sam Neill. Oh, okay. not bad. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I was thinking about him in that movie Daybreakers. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Right there. So in that first movie, I'll just go a quick through. You know, I'm sure you all remember. Press your luck. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a gambler, and uh, you know he was going to die, and then uh, Satan uh, challenged him to a game of press your luck, where instead of winning money, he won time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he won days back on his life. And uh, because he was like a card counter and stuff, he was able to figure out the pattern on the board. And he won 300 years. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's 110,237 days. <laughs> it's like 304 years or some shit. And uh, yeah, but on his first role, and this happened in real life too. Uh, when that guy went on the show, his very first role, he got a whammy. Yeah. And uh, they were like, what the fuck? And then after that, he rolled... 45 consecutive more times and never hit a whammy. It's so, like his system worked. He just like had to like get the feel of it first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is why I chose this game show is because of the whammies. So, uh, you know, he ended up unleashing the whammies. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, was just like some lighthearted chaos and shit like gremlins. All right. <laughs> so if he lost, he lost his soul to Satan. And uh, if he won, he, he got dazes added on to his life he won 300 fucking years <laughs> <laughs> the
the whammies uh, ended up getting out of control and they started killing innocent people. Okay, and then Satan uh, called in the whammy wrangler. You know his demon that that handles the whammies, <laughs> okay, okay? Uh, to go and retrieve them, and uh, they were totally out of control. They also killed him. <laughs> so uh, eventually, Satan uh, he ended up having to join forces with uh, Michael Larson and uh, the demoness, who is the love interest of the story, played by the one and only. Who else would play her but Kate Beckinsale? <laughs> okay, uh, he had to join forces with them to contain them. So now, all right, in Double or Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> it's after 300 years of life, okay, <laughs> Ben Foster is dying. Oh, okay. That long has passed. Huh? Yeah. Okay. It's like way off into the future and shit. <laughs> right. You know, humanity has flourished and everything, and Satan is just, he wants Michael Larson, <laughs> you know, for making a fucking fool out of him last time and everything, and now he's got his chance. So Michael dies, okay, and he ends up in hell. <laughs> and... uh he challenges Satan. <laughs> Double or nothing, bitch. <laughs> Satan, you know, because he's so uh, fucking prideful, he fucking takes it. <laughs> what is the double that Satan benefits from? <laughs> okay. So the stakes are raised, all right? So if Satan wins this time, he gets to open the gates of hell on earth and uh, and, and take over. So, you see, Michael has now bet the lives of all humanity. He has the authority to he do that? He has the authority to do that because he's the only one to ever beat Satan at the game. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So, yeah. You know what? Just love the logic of the story. It's fine. Okay. So I mean, uh, Living in 300 years, maybe he would become the supreme leader. And sure, okay. sure. Maybe. Uh, so, Michael can do that. Now, all right. So, Satan's like, all right, that's fine. We'll do this. But... I'm in control of the game now. So the game now happens because before it happened like on Earth somewhere. It didn't really matter. It was all like a private affair. Now the game happens in hell. <laughs> okay, so we get a you know a whole big CGI fuckathon. Okay, all the demons and shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because uh, you know they're all about to invade Earth. Uh, they're all in hell's arena watching. Okay, <laughs> the game is now. It's the same type of game, but uh, it is now unbelievably impossibly fast <laughs> okay there's no way you can figure out this pattern if there is one uh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh there's also almost no good spaces on the board <laughs> it's almost all like death and like bust a deal face the wheel type shit okay there's also no whammies this time because satan is like no fucking whammies no fucking way <laughs> not not again we ain't, we're not going through that again now satan has a right hand man his vizier who uh I have named Landry, <laughs> okay? And that's because in the real version of the game, this guy, Michael Larson, he was also playing for an at-home player uh -huh. who who benefited from his cheating. Yeah. <laughs> and like won money because of it, and his name was Landry. Okay. Landry is played by Johnny Depp. <laughs> so now the game is being hosted uh, by Johnny Depp, all right? So now it's just Michael Larson... Versus Satan. <laughs> and they're spinning the game, spinning the board and shit. All hell is watching. They're all ready to invade Earth, take humanity, and fucking rule the planet forever. So uh, before the game, uh, Landry actually gets alone with Michael. And he's, uh, he's, he's telling him that, you know, even if you win, uh, Satan is going to take you. <laughs> okay? Yeah, he's fucking with you. Uh, there's no way he's going to let you fucking win this shit. So, you know, really the only way that you... Michael can get out of this is if, uh, you know, you get rid of the devil in entirely. And he's like, what the hell? That's impossible. He's like, yeah, yeah, that is impossible. Anyway, good luck out there, kid. <laughs> so uh, they're out there playing the game and Satan's winning. OK. And, uh, you know, he's passing spins to Michael and shit who, who lands on a space. The one fucking space that says it will grant him one wish. <laughs> okay okay and satan looks at that space and he's like what the fuck i didn't say i didn't put that in this game he looks over at landry and he sees he knows that landry did it on purpose and landry is trying to usurp him mm -hmm. okay johnny depp's taking over for sam neil okay he's betraying him at that point he knows that uh michael can wish the the devil out of existence okay so he starts tempting michael he's like oh you know what uh, fuck it. I'll give you a million years. I don't care. Uh, just all you got to do is get rid of Landry. Okay. You just fucking wish him away and that's fine. Is this all being televised? 
in hell. Okay. <laughs> Humanity doesn't have any idea. <laughs> Shouldn't so, they know? Like everyone in the world's watching, like, come on. <laughs> you know what? Sure. <laughs> so uh, knowing that he is fucked either way, uh, Michael finds the only way that uh, that he can actually get out of this because if he wishes the devil out of existence, he knows Landry will fucking kill him anyway and vice versa. So Michael uses his wish to unleash the whammies. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. And Satan's like, no! Yeah. All right, so whammies start going over. They, they, they go fucking crazy. They just swarm into the <laughs> arena. They flood all over all of the other demons because they're the little motherfuckers that can't be fucking controlled. And they just like, they're eating other demons. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. worse. They're tearing everybody apart and shit. <laughs> Uh, they actually end up tearing the gates of hell open themselves. <laughs> okay, so now we got some real world shit going on looking in looking into hell. Okay. And it turns out that this was the real plan of Landry. Because over all of his time being Satan's like, you know, uh, uh, right hand man or whatever, he learned how to be the only one to be able to control the whammies. Oh shit. So that he was counting on this actually. Now, this time, to raise the stakes even farther, uh, all the whammies end up combining into one giant whammy, and he's called the whammo. <laughs> all right, up on top of the whammo, Landry, fucking Johnny Depp is riding it. He's riding it into Earth to take it over. Okay, at that point, uh, the demoness, uh, you know, Kate Beckinsale, she ends up defeating Landry for Satan. Uh, somehow, I don't know, you can come up with your own plan there if you want. Uh, and in return for doing that, for uh, writing Satan's seat of power back to him, uh, Satan agrees to spare Michael and the rest of humanity. Until next time. <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> so there you go, that's what I got. All right. Tim Burton, you can have that for $3 million. Yep. Good job, guys. Hell yeah, guys. This is like one of my favorite games this so far. Good. Yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> All right, we'll definitely play that again someday. Hell yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll start working on number three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. If you like what you hear, uh, add us to your favorites list or subscribe. And don't forget, leave a rating and a review. And, uh, you know, just leave us some kind words. Check us out on Twitter, at Movies with Ron. Instagram, same thing. Yeah. Facebook. Shoot us an email, movieswithron.com. All right, guys. It's been fun. Love you guys. Bye. Movies with Ron. Yeah, the thing of that is, never loan your equipment out to any friends. That is a toilet bolt. Uh, somebody will fuck you. What, someone took this off of it? Uh, fucking little asshole, like, only had that one and that one, which was not my original stand. I was like, where the fuck's the other one? He was like, this is what you gave me, bro. And I was like, all right, give me all the fucking equipment right now. I hate people. Yeah, yeah fucking dickhead. And, like, the fucking Sennheiser headphones I had, they were like 150 bucks. He was like, oh, no, those are mine. I was like, all right, those are yours. I'm going to need 80 bucks. I would have punched him out. Yeah, I should have fucking done it. That was the last time I ever talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your 80 bucks? Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, the reason why they don't make grape ice cream yeah. is because when you make it in large quantities, which is a bit what a big company would have to do, yes. is because the grapes have so much water content in them, things of ice would form in the ice <clears throat> cream, and it would be bad ice cream. You're not supposed to have ice in the ice cream. Right. Where'd you so learn there that? There you go. Research. Yeah, I did all my research. <laughs> okay, okay. So you were watching the Goonies today, and you heard Chunk say it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Vanilla, chocolate, rocky road. Before that, he's, he's that. Before that, he says apple. <laughs> they got apple? I want some apple, apple ice cream. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, I actually did all this research, and me and him were having coffee, and I told him all this. He's hijacking my shit. Damn right. But check this out. Turns out cherries got the same water content as uh, as grapes. So how come they can do it with cherries, right? Well, the whole reason why they try to do it with cherries is because it's a beloved flavor. Yeah. 
the real reason for no grape ice cream is nobody wants it. Yeah. Because <laughs> nobody grew up on it, so nobody gives a shit. But if you go into Baskin Robbins, they got like grape sherbet. That's not the same thing. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't count. It's always all that crazy fruits. They always have sherbet varieties of it. Now, one company did make a grape ice cream. It's the only one in existence to date, and it's made by Airheads. Yeah. I tried to get a grape milkshake from Baskin Robbins, and they're like, we can't do that. It's sherbet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fuck. I do like sherbet. 